In my mind, I vividly saw myself throwing my sweet newborn baby girl out of our second story window. I was holding her one second and casually tossing her out the window and walking away like nothing ever happened. This is just one of the tricks that my brain was trying to play on me in those first few weeks after she was born. I didn't know it at the time, but I was suffering from a condition called postpartum depression. I remember telling myself, these aren't things a new mom is supposed to be thinking. What's wrong with me? Why am I obsessed with thoughts of my daughter's death? Am I crazy? Am I gonna hurt her? This isn't what I expected. Does this make me a bad mom? I've always been the giggly, bubbly girl who likes to crack jokes whenever things get uncomfortable. I can seriously sport a smile no matter what's going on in my life. And I generally put everyone else above myself. My husband is my soulmate. And when we got married, we did everything by the book. We saved and we built our dream home. And after five years of marriage, we thought the next logical step in our journey was to have a baby. We were so excited and so hopeful for the future, but we had no idea about the challenges that we would face. I'm also incredibly ambitious. Some might even call me an overachiever. I've always had generalized anxiety, but in the past, it fueled my success. It made me valedictorian of my high school. And despite being a total party girl, I graduated college with high honors. It's also made me successful in my career. Basically, my anxiety has always been my friend. When we think about new moms, we can't help but picture pure unbridled joy. Open arms, full of love, welcoming their new human into their life. We see it all over social media. The beautiful baby pics and the big giddy smiles. No one ever posts the sweaty haired pic rocking their new mesh underwear. As moms, we generally put on a brave face. When we're sick, we chug some DayQuil and tough it out. You've all seen the commercial, moms don't get sick days. When I imagine the birth of my daughter, I imagine this magical moment where I would have this completing notion of love and connection. I just knew we would have an unbreakable bond as soon as we locked eyes. In my mind, I was preparing for a fairy tale. When I was only three months pregnant, we had a completed nursery. My daughter's closet was full before I ever even had a baby shower. I thought I was prepared and I thought I had it all figured out. When my daughter was born, we did not have that immediate fairy tale connection. In fact, we didn't really bond at all. I just knew that I loved her and I knew that love was fierce, but it just felt like it was my job to be her mom and we were never really in sync. For nine months during pregnancy and probably even before that, I'd been expecting to have this incredible connection and it didn't happen right away. So of course I blame myself. I'm sure you've all heard about the benefits of breastfeeding. Breast milk is amazing stuff. And I was determined to give my daughter that benefit, but she would never latch, even though we spent hours trying, including making three trips a week to visit lact the lactation consultant. And that was a 45 minute drive each way. After no success with nursing, I decided to exclusively pump to make sure my daughter had that benefit. Anybody that's ever strapped a vacuum to your chest to feed a child, you know exactly what kind of sacrifice that takes. It was exhausting, but I pushed through it to avoid yet another failure in my motherhood journey. While all of this was happening, my emotions continued to spiral out of control. I became increasingly obsessed with thoughts of my daughter's death. They consumed every minute. As soon as I would fall asleep, I would wake up in a panic thinking that I was smothering her. I envisioned her falling out of my arms and down our basement stairs. Basically, if something could go wrong in my head, it was going to go wrong. I couldn't understand why I couldn't just enjoy my sweet baby girl. One day, my husband came in to check on me and the baby. He found me laying on the bathroom floor. For a period of probably two weeks leading up to this moment, I hadn't slept at all. Every time I would drift off, I'd immediately wake up in a complete and total panic. I was also so whacked out during this time that I forgot to eat or drink anything. My body was trying to give up and my brain probably already had. As I was laying there, I remember my husband asking me what was wrong and I couldn't even form words. So he took me straight to the ER. 
I don't even remember the drive to the hospital because I was probably on the brink of psychosis. I was exhausted, scared, and confused, but through all that, I still had this overwhelming sense of guilt for being away from my daughter. At the hospital, I remember the doctor coming in and talking to me about postpartum depression. They gave me fluids and basically forced me to sleep. The doctor and a nurse came in and told me about their own struggles. We all cried. We talked about hormonal imbalances and environmental factors. We thoroughly discussed the condition and how it wasn't my fault. I cried and I cried, but I was so relieved. Maybe I wasn't crazy. Maybe my brain and my hormones were just playing a big joke. Maybe I wasn't a bad mom after all. There are three categories of perinatal mood disorders. The baby blues, postpartum depression, and postpartum psychosis. The baby blues are relatively common and present as raised anxiety, mood swings, and sadness that happens within the first few weeks and usually goes away on its own. Postpartum depression is more severe and can develop any time within the first year of giving birth. Symptoms include raised anxiety, mood swings, irrational behavior, appetite changes, and sleep disturbances. Postpartum depression does not go away on its own and it can progress without treatment. Postpartum psychosis is the least common but the most devastating perinatal mood disorder. Women experiencing psychosis can have hallucinations, severe sleep disturbances, and thoughts of harming themselves or their babies. This condition requires immediate medical attention. Postpartum depression actually affects up to one in five new mothers. It doesn't discriminate, it can happen to anyone, and it's not a result of anything a new mom does or doesn't do. Although its prevalence is high, less than 15% of those affected will ever seek treatment. New moms are suffering in silence, and that's not okay. Women who are predisposed to mental illness are also more likely to suffer from a perinatal mood disorder. With mental health issues on the rise in children and teens, we're likely to have a whole new generation of women struggling in the future. It can be avoided, but we have to be willing to talk about it first. As a society, we need to normalize the fact that maybe things aren't picture perfect after we give birth. It's okay not to be okay sometimes. It's okay to ask for help. And it really does take a village to raise a tiny human. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the excitement of a new baby, but don't forget about the new mom. Don't tell her she's lucky and that she should enjoy this time because chances are she may not feel lucky and she may not be capable of enjoying her new life just yet. We need to have the real conversations and ask the real questions. When you ask a new mom how she's doing after giving birth, chances are she's going to say she's fine. Ask her again and again. Ask her until she really talks about it. If you're a new mom that's struggling yourself, I know how scary this is, but you have to talk to someone. Talk to a doctor or a therapist or a counselor. Talk to your friends or your spouse. Sometimes the bravest thing we can do is ask for help. I got the help that I needed and it ended up making me a better and stronger mother. Here I am two years later and I love being a mom. Don't get me wrong, I still struggle and I still have bad days, but I survived it. Recovery doesn't happen overnight though. It took me a long time to get to where I am today. I had to see lots of doctors and therapists and counselors to get the right treatment plan in place. At around nine months postpartum, I developed a psychogenic fever. I had a fever every single day for over six months because of my anxiety. I also battled severe digestive issues for the first 18 months after my daughter was born. Some days I just had to lock myself in the bathroom because I couldn't even venture far enough away from the toilet to take care of my own daughter. It's been a long, bumpy road, but I'm finally in a very good place. I look back on those early memories of motherhood, and even though I feel like I might have missed out on some of that special joy that a new mom's supposed to feel, I wouldn't change my journey for anything because it led me right to where I am today. Not everyone is lucky enough to have the experience that I did. I'm not lucky to have suffered from severe postpartum depression, but I'm lucky because I got help right away. I'm lucky because my insurance covered my treatment. And I'm lucky because I work for a company that afforded me all the time off I needed to really recover. Change one of these things, I may not have been so lucky. Here's the thing about postpartum depression. It's treatable. 
with the right treatment plan in place, outcomes are generally good. But moms have to be willing to ask for that help. You can't get treatment if no one knows that you're sick. Suicide is the second leading cause of mortality postpartum. Let that sink in. Suicide, the second leading cause of death after giving birth in a time when you're supposed to be happier than you've ever been. We can't continue to let new mamas suffer in silence. Lives are at stake. Share this information with a new mama that you know. Give her a safe space to talk about her own experiences. Heck, just give her a break if that's what she needs. I got the help that I needed and I've made it my mission to help those following behind me. Postpartum depression may never go away, but with awareness and support, outcomes will get better. Babies are cuddly and wonderful, but remember, as a child is born, so is a mother. And we can't keep forgetting about that birth because it's pretty incredible too.